The new Epax 3D printer just came, and it feels like Christmas. I actually had to leave a sign for UPS because there was such a big snowstorm that I was almost positive that they were not going to leave it. Let's see what magic awaits us in this box. There is another box. Invoice full of totally personal information. Probably credit card numbers on it. Extra padding. It's so heavy. Alright, so I own an Anycubic Photon. Also, a Moai. And some Form 1 Pluses. The first thing I'm noticing is, is that this door opens all the way around. Which will give better access to this build area. The other thing I am noticing is that instead of having a single ball mount, which can get out of level. If you have a really tough print, especially if the part is off-center, when it is pulling up, sometimes it can twist, you have to re-level it. But, with this, it comes pre-leveled from the factory, and you never have to level it again. Because it has four screws instead of one small grub screw, But first things first, let's see what is inside. Alright, so we have a fan, on this massive heatsink. And unlike the photon, there is a second fan that pulls air out of the enclosure. And the stepper motor. The main board. The front panel LCD. And power supply for the LED illuminator. What was nice is that there is just four screws to open it up. The screws cannot fall inside like the photon screws. Also. There is a convenient hole that goes all the way through, which is where I will run my heater, and our meter wire. And then this back panel can come off also. Here we are, in a secret underground laboratory, in an undisclosed location. I will show you some more. This is an EPAX vat. It won't fit into the photon. Photon vat. Seems like it will work just fine. And the plate will fit into it no problem. I believe the reason why the Epax vat is larger is because they improved the design to add a rubber gasket inside. I have actually had my photon vat leak leak from the resin going around out the fact that there is no seal inside here. It usually doesn't. I have three vets and only one of them leaks. But, I think that is a nice feature. Now let's see if the EPAX really is more powerful than the Photon. This is a watt meter and it shows that the EPAX draws about 75 watts, when the exposure LED is on. With the LED off, but the cooling fan on, it is about 14.6 watts. This means that the LED and LED driver are consuming just over 60 watts of power. Now the photon is exposing, and using about 39.3 watts. Now it is resting, and about 10 watts. So the photon LED and LED driver use almost 30 watts. This makes sense, as it is a 25 watt LED, and the driver is about 80% efficient. Now let's compare the photon illumination diffusion. I can really see each individual LED. The EPAX shown here, is much more diffuse, and uniform. Now for a test print. I will print the vase sample that comes on the SD card. I will use the Eson Bio Resin, in color red.
Let's pause the print and see how it is doing. Oh wow! It is doing great! That is a relief! Now for something more advanced. This printer can do anti-aliasing. That will remove jagged edges from the parts and make the display look as smooth as a 4K display, but without the higher price of such a machine. Let's see how these parts came out. Oh wow! I am blown away! I have never made parts this nice before. They look injection molded. This is the EPAX sample, at 8 seconds. It is so so smooth. So here is a comparison of the Amero Labs Town test print. The photon sample is a 10 second exposure. The EPAX is at 8 seconds. It may be hard to see in the video, but the EPAX 1, with the anti-aliasing, is more smooth with fewer jaggies. Now for the ultimate test. Can the EPAX print this test print with the space needle still intact, even at the very high speed exposure of just 6 seconds? Yes. Why yes it can. On the photon, this feature existed for a 10 seconds exposure, but was not in place for the 8 second one. Therefore, 6 seconds on the EPAX is more exposure than 8 seconds on the photon. We can take any photon exposure and multiply it by 0.7. That will tell us what exposure to use with the EPAX. So how much does speed matter? Well, a 90 mm tall object with 50 micron layers is 1800 layers. Any cubic solid color resin on a photon is typically 14 seconds per exposure. Compare that to 6 seconds for this red resin on the EPAX. That is a savings of 8 seconds per exposure. If we multiply 8 seconds by 1800 exposures, that is 14400 seconds. A massive 4 hours time savings. So yes, speed matters a lot, especially with results like these. Centipede and Wargames graphics are not included.